I say, right, uh, good morning, well, good afternoon, or uh, very excited to have Tyron back. Uh, we're going to do a comp session for changes. Our first, looking at the weather, it doesn't look like winter, but it is middle August, so it's going to be our first uh, official comp session with the client, Stefan. So, um, with winter comp, the main thing that you're going to be looking out for, whenever you have the first South Easter that comes through, if, even if it's only like for a day, that should bring the cob in a bite. So, it's always a bit of a gamble just to try and hunt for the cobbies, but... If you get them, they're always nice quality fish and they're strong with a pool of water. The main bait that I prefer using during this time of the year, obviously bloodworm does work, I like sardine. So I'm going to be showing you two sardine baits that, that always works for us. Um, and of course, even if the cob doesn't bite, it frees you up to get those big false wet black tail that we get here with the big white stuff that we all also get as a, as a bycatch. So really looking forward to this session. We're going to do some water reading for you as well. And uh, actually, yeah, just go through the basic traces for cobbies. So I'm really looking forward to a good show. Yeah, so let's see what happens. So um, yeah, I was going to show you how to do a dingle dangle. It is cob boss. The start, hopefully the start of cob season. So um, I normally have a bit of a 200 pound leader left. So you can use Dacron 110, 120 pound Dacron or the 200 pound leader. So I was going to actually start with this. Have a little split ring, size three split rings, the stainless steel split rings. So what you do, that. That'll be where your sinker gets uh, clipped on. That. Do a little normal clean shot on that. It's so simple. Just pull it tight. Okay. Now just measure more or less the length of your dingle dangle. I'm not going to go too long today, too big. Normal overhand knot. That's it. Okay, so that's basically a dingle dangle. I'll show you now. You're gonna slip the hook in underneath that knot, and then that will be the clip where your sinker gets clipped on. Now I'm just gonna put a little foam body on there. I guess trim it, trim it a bit like that. Sharp knife. All you do, a little slit in there. Okay. There's your dingle dangle. You take your bait cart and tie that up. And all you're going to do then with a with a hook will be like on scene. Just pop it open a bit, take the hook underneath the knot. Oh, here we should be doing. Okay, right, there's your homemade dingle dangle. Now the, the benefit of this. There's no wire inside. There's a soft decker on a soft uh, piece of braid. So it's very pliable and flexible. So when the cob takes you, it just folds with the fish's mouth. And we're often with a, with a braid, uh, sorry, with a, with a wire dangle, where the fish isn't really feeding aggressively, they'll take you and just drop the bait as well. So with this, the, you definitely get more commitment. So yeah, I do prefer using this, specifically for the silver cobbies and false bait. Right, so uh, sardine, one of our biggest baits that we use in false bay. Really frees up to, to target cob and everything else really, especially the flat fish in it. So look at the sardine, beautiful. Uh, no blood in the bottom. Nice and fresh, everything's still intact. No tears or guts and stuff that's running out here. Nice batch of sardine there. So I'm going to show you how I prep them for the, uh, for the cob bait. So uh, yeah, so chuck that boy off. Top and tail it. So you're going to measure your, your dingle dangle the distance. That's going to be your your stomach part cut. So very very simple. Just give it a bit of a chop like that. A couple of thin cuts like that. Now keep your sardine frozen. Otherwise it goes to a, to a pulp. All right. First one. If you have the back of the hook. Pop it in there. Press it down. Make sure your clip is still exposed. Take a slightly thicker latex, a thick one. Bend on fast. So I'm just going to take your, your cutlets. Put the fast 
though. It's important to keep your bait frozen, otherwise, yeah, it's not going to last. So I think it's really, really soft. So you want to have it like a, almost like a teardrop shape. It will travel easier, well, but it will cast better as well. If it's very long, it can be uh, off balance and you get that helicopter effect when you cast. Uh, it's terrible. Instant ease or so far, sir. Shape it like that. Let tie it off once around the finger. Twice. That's perfect. For a bite sized prize. What did I do here? So, take my video now. So, if I come out for it again, then this is first hard. So, alright. Okay, so today I'm going to be fishing the Shimano Spheros, 14,000. That's 40 pound Kariki. The new Kariki braid from Shimano. It's strong. It's really, really strong. It's a, it's a mission when you get stuck because it doesn't break. Um, so 40 pound. I've got a FG knot connected to a 0 0.70 leader. Um, and then, yeah, four adrenaline circle, five ounce sinker. So, yeah, and of course, the authorized uh, purple turtle, five to seven ounce. So, really nice combination. In a good distance also. And the nice thing, really thing that the good thing that I like is that you have a bit of a casting lip. If you look at that reel, it's got a casting lip. So the, the line flow or the braid flow is, is effortless uh, instead of having a normal bumpy there. So yeah, get a bit more extra distance as well. Hi, good morning guys. So this is Zoe. Uh, she's from Sabre Fishy. Uh, we've been for six years now. We've done a lot of great work with the beach cleanups and yeah, she actually assisted us on um, on Sunday just to do a massive beach cleanup. Over two tons of crap were collected. So well, great work that they're doing at the moment. So I'm just going to pass you over. Sweet. Yeah, so my name is Zoe Prince, founder of Sabre Fishy. I started this organization six years ago and I mean to date we've done over 330 cleanups picked up over 30 tons of litter already two tons just being from a casa beach from one cleanup so i'm so grateful to ground for showing us this spot and giving us a bit of a lay of the land so we can really get in here and try and, and try and fix up this beach it's a beautiful stretch of beach i mean the fishermen use it so often and i mean the state of it is just horrendous so i'm very excited to be back here today and yeah, pick up some more litter Okay, so um, just quickly, I've got my little lead over there. I've got a small power swivel. The sinker line, I prefer to attach to the top eye of the power swivel. Okay, sinker line to the top eye with the leader. Your hook line will go in the bottom part. I'll show you now why. So I'm going to be using uh, 0.63 fluorocarbon. Uh, love this brand. It's doing very well for us at the moment. Very good abrasion resistant as well. Two hour adrenaline circle look. A slightly bigger hook than what I normally use. Normally I, I like the one as for scratching. Uh, because we're, we're going to be throwing for the cobbies as well and maybe a big black tail. Just upscale the hook a bit. Alright, so the trace length like that. So a small power swivel, a single, well it's normal barrel, not barrel, sorry, power swivel. Uh, the three way swivel tends to get stuck because of its, its profile, right. Now, if you look at that, you've got your, your leader, your sinker, and you've got your hook over there. So when your sinker is anchored, you still have a bit of current and the swivel can still swivel on its own. All right. So it does help a bit if there's a bit of current in the water, it prevents that banana wrapping from happening. So yeah, and because you're gonna be casting into the bricks now, I'm gonna use a normal, 
four ounce pear, or I think I've seen goat balls, it's a nine sinker. And that is it. So that's your, your trace, shorter sinker trace. Start a longer trace, 2 0. It's going to trim the edges off, or the tips off, make it look more presentable for the camera. So, okay, so I'm gonna put some uh, some prawns on this. So, so with the sand prawns, very effective bait. So what I do, I'll keep. Uh, so they've been pumped yesterday. Some of them have uh, moved on in life, but yeah. So what I'll do, I'll take the smaller ones. I'll put one through the head. Bait button. So I'll use those two as a base just to uh, give it a bit of a uh, tie up nice and firmly, tightly. So, I take the, the bigger prawns, just lie it on the side there. Put a wrap. I actually use the, uh, the thin bait cotton, or the medium one, sorry. There's a thick one, but yeah, I'll get it, the job done. Tie it up nice and tightly against the, up against the line. Just catch around the heads. Not too tight, just catch it in. Okay, tie it off once around the finger. So, yeah, nice little prong bait there. Very, very simple. I'm just gonna tie that up a bit more. Otherwise, uh, if that tail is almost like a, like a fin and spins around in the air, so I prefer to have that tapered. So there I go, so tasters had a really good pull, definitely a cop, like flat box. So on the lighter rod, the two adrenaline, nice big gape. It's gonna do a very, very basic bait. This is, this is a bait that I normally throw when we're targeting the uh, the blue rays and the eagle rays as well and when the cobbies is very very close so there's no dingle dangle you're just going to build a nice straight bait it's quick and it works so again i only use a dingle dangle if i need to get casting distance with a sardine it's so soft that it will not interfere with that hookup i'll just do a little small little piece of jersey to keep it anchored like that that it became a car and it'll keep that hook nice and upright so I'm not going to clip this bait at all, obviously there's no... If you're going to clip this bait, then the whole bait's going to slide up the line. So you're just going to throw it like that. Okay, let's go. Okay, so um, yeah, I got a, a few anchovies off the boat from uh, one of the gentlemen on Makassar. There's a little anchovy. Look at the little sardine. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to trim it. I'm going to cut it through the gills. So that's going to be the base. And this one, I'm going to flick it. I think we'll probably just keep it like that. But the anchovy is very, very soft and oily. It's going to open it up like that. Okay, the part dashes. So, sardine, so just going to put it through the body like that. Point stays nice and proud. Just like that. You're gonna use your bait cotton just to keep everything in place. The main thing is you don't want this bait to move while you cast, to move up the line or down the line, otherwise it forms a clump. So use your bait cotton quite uh, liberally, I think that's the right word. It's supposed to look a bit nicer than that. Get properly on the top there so it doesn't move. Shake it with your hands. That's a little small sardine and a chovy for Mickey. So. I'll be chasing down, tough it out. Okay, so, uh, well, five time to push. I've got some prawns from yesterday still alive. Put them in a four hook, like a big prawn bait. 
I'm just going to pop it over a lip and see maybe we can get a coffee like that or a big black tail. Anyway, so this is a seven stripe cat shark. Um, they are beautiful uh, in the Mid-East Africa. Oh, it plays a trick. So, yeah. Mission, just to test the waters a bit wasn't successful uh, that was we had one one couple uh, that was on sardine bait um, like a quick drunk and they, they missed it then uh, taste made a dent in the skarmite population and we got a very nice striped cat shark so uh, okay that time of the year we're gonna get them the waters well they predicted 2.2 meters swell 10 second wave this is huge like 3 point odd um, lung in the water as well so unfortunately not what they predicted, but yeah, we still gave it a good go. Um, tomorrow we're going to be back, so the hunt is definitely on. Tomorrow it's got to be flatter. Uh, they're predicting 1.1 and 1.2 meters swell. So it's definitely going to be a, be a bit of a change. Water temperature, about 15, perfect, colors good. It needs to happen. Always exciting to chase that first cop of the season. So yeah, we're definitely going to get him sometime. It's going to happen in the next session or two. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Bye.